It's story time, the next edition. This takes place back in the, uh, I want to say the uh, early 90s. Another episode down in Baltimore. G-Money had just relocated to Baltimore. And I didn't really know a whole lot about the place, to be honest with you. But uh, I had moved in on the uh, Baltimore County, Baltimore City line. And I got friends with some people that owned a little uh, tavern up the street. They also owned a little liquor store. And I got to be uh, friendly with those people because uh, that's where I had uh, told you previously that uh, everything I needed was right close to where I lived within a block or two. So it was the barbershop, pizza shop, a uh, little tavern, a little gas station, a little liquor store. You know, there was even a little Baptist church on the end that was probably the one place i did not to uh attend too much but might have been useful but uh so now i'm going to tell you about uh when i moved down there i i i was really looking for work i was hungry for work and i was i was i was a fellow who was in real good shape and and i i, I could pretty much do anything so i get talking to uh this guy, Kevin, his family owned the, uh, the little tavern there. And um, I get talking to him. I said, you know anybody that does uh, lawn care or anything like that? And So he introduces me to a fellow named George Wedlock. I'll never forget this guy. I love this guy. I, lo I loved him more than I loved my own father. This guy was great. He was probably uh, good 20 years older than me. Uh, he was an African-American man. I was a white man. It didn't matter to us. We just got along great. And he was a great teacher of life in, in many ways. But, uh, <coughs> excuse me. <coughs> he was, he, he did all kinds of like handyman service. He did, uh, he was really, really like a, a, a rocket scientist when it came to any type of lawnmower repair. He was always wheeling and dealing in tractors and riding mowers and he he could fix anything he had all kinds of like uh, microfilm and he just he just really smart dude so uh i get talking to him I, he was you know, i was still new to him and everything so i said george man i'm really hungry for some work i said you know what do you what do you got for me what can you do he says uh can you do tree work and i'm like yeah you know, I'm, I'm thinking to myself, hell no, I've never been up in a tree in my entire life other than just climbing. I never really cut any. I'm just thinking, but, you know, you got to start somewhere. So uh, I uh, I can't remember. I, I think I had got a used chainsaw from him or I don't know. I ended up basically I started gathering some used equipment. So uh, he tells me about these uh, two retired teachers live in a place called Edmondson Village. And uh, Edmondson Village, uh, I'll tell you more about that later, but these people end up being sweet as could be. I'll never forget it because it was pretty much like the same time of year as it is right now. And uh, I'll never forget it was it was like mid to late August. And they, they needed some limbs cut down. So I'm thinking like limbs. No, I get there and they're like, they're like tree trunks growing out the side of a, a bigger tree trunk like big mega stuff so i got my uh my caucasian friend uh troy with me who had spent four years in the marine corps and i had him as my ground guy and i get up in the tree and it's just it's just one of them days were just murphy's law nothing was going right so uh i had him as the rope guy and everything and i'm up there cutting and then you know like chainsaw breaks chainsaw number one then i'm i'm fighting all this stuff and doing all i'm up and down i'm i'm sweating like a pig and uh i get up there with the next chainsaw number two breaks and i hear there's i kid you not there was probably like six or seven fellas uh this these these real nice retired teachers their their uh their property backed up to like basketball courts and uh like I said, these these teachers, they were they were retired teachers, sweet as could be. But uh, 
So I, I'm, I'm having the worst. I, I forget. It, I know what I wasn't going to make a whole lot that day, a hundred and hundred and twenty dollars or something like that. And just nothing's going right. I thought I'd be in and out of there in like an hour, hour and 15 minutes. And now nothing's going right. So I'm now I'm up there with, uh, like a, like a bow saw and all this stuff. So all these gangsters were basically, I don't know, like a hundred yards away. <coughs> so they're, they're making all kinds of comments. Troy's on the ground. Troy's the Marine, right? I'm just like Joe Schmo. Dude played football all his life and everything. So <laughs> I, he could tell I was getting ticked off, and uh, he said, "Gary, don't, don't, don't do it, don't do it, don't say." It. And finally, finally, one dude calls me Paul Bunyan. I was like, that, that, "That's all I need right now." I, I dropped the stuff out of the tree. I see me down that tree, and I kid you not, there was six, at least six or seven guys, like, like. And I'm the minority, remind you, I'm in the minority here. And uh, I, I called him out, and I, I didn't have the most polite language at the time. I said, which one of you uh, SOBs called me Paul Bunyan? And they all started looking at each other kind of like smart. And I was like, you see how my eyes are bugged? That's how I get when I get, like, BS crazy. So I said, come on. Who called me Paul Bunyan? Paul Bunyan's right before you. I mean, and they all looked at each other like, 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 they they were like this 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 Caucasian is like straight up crazy. And at that point, I didn't know at the time that Edmondson Village, which is where I was, was the highest crime rate in the city of Baltimore. I didn't know that at the time. And uh, I don't know if it would have made a difference or not, but. Uh, Later on, you know, like, you know, they, they, they end up started throwing like M80s and all these explosives and stuff like that. But all I did every once in a while, I turn around and look at them. And then like, all of a sudden, like they just, they just chilled out and uh, it was just, just, just crazy. But afterwards, when I was catching all these shoplifters, I was catching all these shoplifters and they were like, oh, heroin addicts and all this crazy stuff. And, uh, I was getting all their information and like almost every one of them was from Edmondson village. And I'm like, Oh Lordy. Like I started thinking about what happened that day. And, and my buddy Troy, who was the Marine, it was basically worthless. Like, I don't think he could fight a girl scout, but, uh, he, there's a dude who was on embassy duty for like four years you know, supposed to know about security and all this stuff. And, and like, he was basically worthless to me, but, uh, and then he, I worked with him trying to catch shot. He could not catch a cold. He, he could not catch anything. You, you could put stuff in your pocket right in front of him and he could not, he could not see it. But, uh, anyway, that's another true story about, uh, craziness in Baltimore. And uh, I'm glad I don't live there no more. I mean, I liked it while I was there, but I realized, like, I was living on borrowed time because every day you were going to war. Wherever you went, you were going to war. It, it was just crazy. That's it. End of that story.